communications world right now selling voice over IP products that weren't even doing voice over IP when Asterisk was released to start doing that. So anyway, we'll skip through most of these because there's not a lot of need to go through all of these, but there's a couple of them that I want to really focus on, and this is the first one. This is uh, approximately two years ago now. This was the first release where things had actually become feature-filled enough and stable enough for people to just say, I'm going to use this to do X, fill in the blank, whatever X might be. And as a result of that, it has proliferated rather dramatically. Um, we've seen estimates, since it's open source and free, there's really no way for us to know how many instances of asterisk are running out there in the world. We've seen estimates that range from a quarter of a million systems to a couple million systems, and you know, we don't know what the margin for error of those on either end is, but it's certainly a rather large number. And the interesting thing is that most of them are very happy with this version. Now, not 1.2.0. We've obviously had lots of bug fixes and security fixes since two years ago. But this core version has powered a lot of products. We've seen an ecosystem develop around this. Companies that produce PBXs and companies that produce hosted telephony services platforms and all kinds of things that developed around Asterisk when it got to this level of maturity. We made another major release approximately a year ago, added a bunch of bunch more functionality. Um, and we are at the point where we're ready to make another one. However, we haven't done so yet. Whoops. We haven't done so yet for some uh, extremely unusual reasons, mostly that we're changing the release management philosophy. And the reason for that, unlike most other pieces of open source software that people use in their networks, phone systems are treated very differently from things like, say, an email server or a web server or even a database server to some extent. For most of those products, when the vendor comes along and says, hey, here's this new version and it has all of these new cool things, don't you want to upgrade to this? You say, yeah, hey, that's great, I can use all that. Do you ever do that with your phone system? No. People put in a phone system, sits there for five or six years, and then when they're ready to pull it out and put a new one in, they pull it out and put a new one in. It's rare that they actually put a software upgrade in that isn't just bug fixes. That has happened in our ecosystem as well. People have said, you know what, I put version 1.2.6 on my machine and even though I know it's got seven known security vulnerabilities and all these bugs that have been fixed, it still works for me and I'm happy with that. So it means that we've had to change our release management process somewhat. It also means it's going to be harder for us to get really powerful new functionality out there to actually being used because people are happy with what we've already produced. So we have some interesting problems to solve there. Uh, some very minor stuff here. For those of you who haven't been involved in our open source community, uh, we get about 10 issue reports a day. Some of those are people adding new functionality. Most of them are people reporting problems. Most of the time those are not actually problems. They're lack of understanding on the user, user's part. And another interesting thing, and this is something that is a very different situation um, in the open source world versus commercial world, when we have a security vulnerability reported against our products, which we have, I think, uh, so far this year we've had 27 um, in various different parts of Asterisk, um, it is rare that it takes us longer than 24 hours to get a version of the product out that has that vulnerability fixed. What that means is that in every single one of those cases, we can have the update out before the publication of the vulnerability goes out is not always the case. In fact, it's frequently not the case with commercial software products. Um, so that means for those of you who are using Asterisk and have it in networks where it is exposed to uncontrolled environments, whether that might be the public internet or just a large enterprise network or whatever it might be, that you have a lot greater level of assurance that when a problem like this is found that you're going to have a fix for it very quickly because you don't have to say, well, you know, in the past it's taken four months from the time a vulnerability report gets reported until our vendor, a fix from the vendor actually comes out. We've actually seen that in the commercial world where someone will find a problem, report it to, you know, pick your big name vendor. I'm not going to pick in any particular company here, but it happens with all of them. And it takes 90 days for them to even acknowledge that the problem exists and decide that they're going to fix it. In our case, what generally happens is we get the email saying that we have their problem and everybody drops what they're doing <laughs> so they can go confirm that it actually is a problem and the patch is usually ready in five minutes and then we just have to figure out how to get a release out to the rest of the world. So for those of you that are interested in using a product in a, 
a non-controlled environment. I don't know a better way to say that, but when you're using it as a small PBX inside a 10-person company, security vulnerabilities aren't usually much of a concern for you because you don't have much of a network to worry about. But when there's people that have 50 asterisk servers that are all on the public internet, obviously it's a larger problem. All right, so now we can start into some more of the things that are more relevant to this particular topic. So, Aster started its life as a simple PBX. That's exactly what it was intended to be. To be a PBX for a small company, maybe 30, 40, 50 people, uh, support a bunch of different kinds of interfaces, whether those might be voice over IP or traditional TDM or whatever they might be, and do voicemail, maybe do some conferencing, and the things that a small business would need. Um, however, putting it out there for people to use means they're going to use it in ways that you didn't expect. Um, in some cases, that's really amazing. We hear about really incredible usages of asterisks that we never would have imagined. Um, some of them don't have a lot of commercial application, but are interesting. For example, there's one that was done by a group at NYU right here in New York City, where they have um, moisture sensors in houseplants that are all connected to little wireless transmitters which then connect to a receiver to the asterisk server. And if one of your plants needs water, it will call you and tell you that it needs water. So <laughs> and the really cool part is that they've got different voices for all the different kinds of plants. So, so the English ivy actually calls you with an English accent to tell you that it needs water. It's quite humorous. Not very much commercial application, but those are the kinds of things that turn into things later that no one ever realized were possible. On the other side of the coin, we have what the people that are presumably in this session want to hear about, which is, how do I make this service 100,000 people instead of 10 people or 1,000 people or whatever it might be? And we've had a lot of work to do to get to the point where that could be done. Um, we have improved performance, although I would say that as is generally true in the computer world, we probably haven't improved the performance of the software as much as the performance of the computers that it's running on have improved. So we haven't had to worry about that as much. But we have uh, people who've done performance and scalability testing on asterisk, in fact, one who just walked in the back of the room, <laughs> who have done um, hundreds or if not thousands of simultaneous calls on a moderate performance server, which means that even in an enterprise scenario, if you think about deploying a traditional PBX for an enterprise that might have, well, pick a number, 6,000 employees, the typical ratios might say that that PBX needs to support seven or 800 simultaneous calls, unless they have a huge call center. If it's a traditional office environment, it's probably gonna be something more along those lines. Now think about how much it would cost you to deploy, to buy the PBX, not the phone, just the PBX for an enterprise for 6,000 people. It's going to be in the probably six-digit range, would be my guess. Asterisk can do that on a $2,000 server from Dell or HP or whatever you want, and the software is free. So from a raw performance of the product point of view, it's reached the point where individual Asterisk servers can do quite a bit. We have continued to add scalability features, but what we have not attempted even to address is making a single asterisk server try to be able to support the largest user populations in the world because that's not our focus. Our focus is, as the last item says there, scaling horizontally. You want to support more users, you add more boxes. So now the point is how do you manage those boxes? And that's what we're going to start talking about, how you do these things. This comes from the fact that we are in the open source world. We don't try to be everything to everyone. There are things that Asterisk does really well, and there are things that it doesn't do at all, or it does okay, but you wouldn't want to deploy in very large volume scenarios. For example, one of those is being a high volume SIP proxy. So you can imagine if you are a carrier that's providing SIP trunking services to businesses, and you've got 10,000 users, 10,000 companies that are using your service, maybe aggregate, they've got 50,000 trunks between them. The number of calls that in aggregate are being started every second through your network is going to be pretty large. If you've got 50,000 trunks out there, it's probably going to be a couple thousand during a normal business day. Asterisk is not designed in a way that it can handle that. Even though it might be able to handle 2,000 simultaneous calls, it's not going to handle 2,000 simultaneous calls being initiated all at the same time. It, now, you know, it's going to slow down, there's going to be problems, it's not going to crash, it's just that you're not going to get the performance you would expect out of that. 
So what's most commonly done in a community is to use a product called OpenSUR, or it's not quite as open source.